All right. So this is going to be part two to this little refrigerator troubleshooting. It's a mini fridge. So far with the level two students, I've already gone over the wiring diagram, which this is pretty similar to those water coolers that we've been taking apart in the classroom here. But somebody brought in this fridge, and I already put up a video that's about 15 minutes long that explains the operation of how this uh, refrigeration system works. And then we also discovered by using the uh, amp meter that the compressor was locked up. Now, usually when the compressor's locked up, that's it, it's done. So either you change out the compressor, or by the time they spend the expense of getting a service guy to troubleshoot it, take the compressor out, order a new one, bring the new one, put a cook it up, you've already exceeded the cost of a new mini fridge. So a lot of these just get disposed of, thrown away. So this one actually can be saved by using this old tool, which I don't see too many of these around anymore. It's called a hermetic analyzer. And they were pretty popular in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, and I see that they've just started, I think there's a couple companies like UEI that are making a comeback with this type of hermetic analyzer. It looks a little different, but this one's the 120 volt version. There's another one that works with 240 volt, 208, 240. That plug's a little different. It actually has clips to clip in, and that's more for the residential air conditioning like commercial units. This one here I prim primarily use just for the little domestic refrigerators, although this one can do uh, 240. There's a 240 selector switch. I imagine it's got a step-up transformer in the back that allows me to go from one voltage to another. So it's got some meters here. It can actually test the relays for us. But really what I'm going to use this to do is to reverse the rotation of the compressor inside. And the way it does that is it just momentarily will reverse the current through the winding. So normally it goes through a start winding with a capacitor to get this motor to energize. It's going to take that capacitor and switch it through to the run winding. And that will cause the motor to temporarily go backwards for a split second. And sometimes that's all that's needed to free up these compressors. And then once it gets going, uh, it tends to run for however long it's gonna run for. And then, uh, you know, but usually it can get a few more years out of the unit unless it keeps locking up for some reason inside. There's something internally going on with it when it locks up. Something, something's damaged it. So where we left off, we gotta take off this little cover plate and behind it, I'm gonna see an overload protector. I also explained in the last video uh, what the overload protector does and even showed in operation I think with a lighter how it worked so we removed this cap and what we have here is we have the overload and the start relay so there's a capacitor somewhere in this circuit and uh, this relay takes that capacitor out of, out of, out of the commission when uh, once it's once it's energized so uh, but what we need to do is we need to find common start run using the meter and usually with these three you might want to get up a little closer on this here usually with these three it's can she run when you see a, a triangle like that and it's right side up with the terminal pin sticking out so it's going to be common start run but I can confirm that real quick with a meter because the biggest number between two leads should have common directly opposite of it and I've showed I also got a couple videos on YouTube on how to how to find common start run with this. So we're gonna use the ohm meter, can use continuity, or we could use ohms. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to ohms, and then let me see if we can get that so it's in the, in the shot there. But I'm gonna go ahead and go down to these bottom two and get a reading, 16.8 ohms. So that's the resistance of the wire inside the compressor. So that's 16.8, and then if these other two to the side are smaller, which it is, seven, we'll say eight, seven and a half, eight, and 10, we'll say 10. So yeah, this one here is the biggest. The one directly across is gonna be common. And then the one with the smaller number, which was going over here, I think that was 7.5, that's gonna be run. And the one with the one in the middle, it's gonna be from here to here, I think that was 10. That's going to be start. So it is, can she run? So we need to do that because we have three terminal leads that we're going to hook up here coming out of this ante. All right, and we already inspected the ground on this unit to make sure that the ground worked good. I'm just going to go ahead and clip this around. Anywhere that there's non-painted metal would be good. So I can clip it around a screw head there, and that's going to be good. That'll hold the ground. All right, and then the, the way these work here, red is run, common, is gonna be black and my start is gonna be white. 
So we're gonna hook this up to start on the far side. And if you take a look, the, the, these alligator clips have a little dimple. That's because you can't put them straight off to the side like that. It could touch one of the other terminals or it could touch and short up against the compressor housing and that would ground it out. So we wanna make sure that we do these so they're not touching each other. And uh, let me do the run over here first. All right, those are on. They're not gonna shake off or anything. Okay, so this is separate from the circuit. This is now creating its own circuit. All right, we're gonna go ahead, we'll set this at the lowest setting. Make sure that's off, the cap's off. All right, we set it on relay. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put it to power. All right, and then we're gonna leave this master switch off. I'll turn it to reverse and hit start, and then turn it on and hit start and we'll hear and see if the, uh, if the motor comes up. I'm also going to go ahead and, this is a small unit, so I'm going to go with the smallest capacitance for this uh, particular compressor. Uh, and then this is all rated on horsepower, and I can, I can show you later on in another video how to figure that out. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in. We do have power. Power light comes on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it in reverse and hit the start button. Maybe increase the voltage here a little bit. Let's go ahead and get this to low. That she's not starting up here. Hold on one second. Let's see here. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and put her on on, and she's running. So that 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 actual compressor was locked up the other day, and that's good. We're done. So now she's freed up. We reversed it. You heard it grind a little bit going backwards. Then we went ahead and turned it forward. So now we can go ahead and unplug this, take off all our leads, reconnect back up our starting components, which would be the relay and the overload. And actually the, the overload has to go on first because of this, these tabs here. It won't let it fit over the relay if you put the relay on first like I just did. So we'll switch this around here, put the overload on first, and then the relay. And then the cap, gotta put the cover back on. And then these wires come out a certain way out of this cover. Gotta make sure that they line back up. So usually there's a tab on, on one of the sides. On this case, it's gonna be on the bottom. And that'll let the wires slide through with the exception of set off to the side okay caps on and then there's a little strap connects it up just need to put that over on either side and it locks in make sure you can't pull the cap off and now we can go ahead and test out this compressor now it might not come on right away because the thermostats off or right away she does so now we can go ahead and we can ohm out the compressor she's running again this little machine saves people literally thousands of dollars. It's really, let me see if I can get one of these wires here. Get the amps. All right, and we're pulling 1.5 amps and our running load amps is, the rated current is 1.3. So we are underneath, before it was locking up, I think at like five, six amps if you go back to the other video. But now this one here, we got it down to 1.3. The compressor's running, which means after a few minutes here, we'll put a thermometer in and test it to make sure that it is cooling. Uh, but with this shell type evaporator, we should start to feel this getting cool up in here like this. So we'll let that run for a minute, and then we'll come back to it in about 15 minutes and check it out. There are some other things that you could purchase uh, from an appliance store. If you did not have this tool, 
This is called a hard start kit. There's two types. There's one type that just connects on to the existing capacitor. And what this is is a booster. I do not recommend these for most of the reg regular residential equipment, domestic refrigerators, because when they're left in the circuit, I've heard that they burn out the start winding. One of the windings, the motor, it trickles, and then it allows that winding insulation to burn off, and then it shorts out the start winding. So, uh, but they do work for some, some cases. Uh, there's one here that I busted apart. So you would wire in your power wires that went to the compressor, uh, the, the common and the hot, to this two terminals here, and then you would have uh, three other terminals. I'm sorry, I think it's white, red, and black here. These two would go to, yeah, these two black wires here will go to your power, and then these ones would tie into the common start run on the compressor, and really when you pull it off, it's just another capacitor with a relay and an overload in it. Okay, so that's all it is. It's just another capacitor. And capacitor, if you look back on the other video where I explained capacitors, remember it's just a plate of aluminum foil wrapped with some sort of non-conductive metal, usually wax paper, over and over and over again that delays the voltage from, it kind of builds up all the electrons on one plate. Then they jump over to the other plate and that delay is what offsets the phase to start the motor on the start winding. Okay, so there's one of these that you can usually purchase for about 30, 40 bucks. They also might save the compressor. But like I said, I've heard them burn up. I've heard them get hot, I've heard them burn up. And then uh, I really don't use these. There's another one called Kickstart for residential air conditioning work. That one's really good because it has a different type of relay that completely takes the capacitor out of the circuit after the motor starts. And that one's good to use, but the other ones, uh, I'm not too sure about these here. So that's it.